And I'm Jeremy Kaplan. And we are here today to give you a little bit of a peek into this entrepreneurial journalism, journalism creators program at the City University of New York, Newmark Graduate School of Journalism, um, which is a mouthful. Uh, to, to, to briefly summarize what that's about is this program is for journalists, independent journalists in particular, and creators around the world who uh, want to start or build newsletters, podcasts, niche websites, local websites, and other entrepreneurial innovative projects. So we are here to help people um, get a jump start, get a boost in the development of their new ventures. And we do that through this 100 day journey. It's a fully online program and I'll tell you more about it as we go. Um, but, um, but that's who we are. And what we're here to do to, today to do is to give you a peek into how the program works, what it's all about, why we do what we do, how we do what we do, um, how it might benefit you. Um, also here to answer your questions and to give you a, a little bit of a sense of the experience from the participant point of view. So to that end, I want to um, introduce a, a colleague of mine, a friend of mine, a, a former student, a former partner, current partner, current colleague, current collaborator, Michael Rain, who's with us, um, who participated in the program a couple years back and um, along the way um, can share his own thoughts, his own experiences. Uh, Michael's also been fortunate enough to be a, a fellow in various different programs has uh, has done a lot so he can share some perspective on, on on what this program is like and how it compares to other programs i also want to introduce um another colleague of mine hillary fry who's our one of our creators in residence who's a fantastic uh journalist uh veteran leader at many news organizations and um our creator in residence at, at present and she can also share her own perspective on how this fit how this kind of journey this 100 day journey might fit in for journalists and others um, thinking about you know uh the, the value of this kind of experience over the course of your career okay so let's let's dive into this this uh this opening poll um i want to see what the results are for anyone just joining um you can um charlotte is uh, my colleague here on the team and, and she can um share that link again in the chat um or i'll grab it here um into um this poll we're going to do a couple of of, uh, of polls along the way to see where people are at in terms of your own um, creative journeys. And let's take a look at what people are saying at the moment. I'll give you a minute to, uh, to respond to that icebreaker. Okay, so um, we've got some responses here, and I'll share my screen, and you can see what the what how how what the tenor of the room is. Um, then I'm going to uh, switch the poll question here. So people are feeling uh, energized, some of them happy, hopeful, interested, curious, or other words, um, uh, exciting, absolutely focused. That's great. Decompressing. That's a good one. That's an interesting one. Um, curious to hear more about what what you mean by that. Um, let's let's ask a, another question here, um, which is. Um, uh, there's actually two parts to this now. You should see on your screen two questions. Um, essentially, where are you at in your journey? And what kind of product or thing are you either thinking about building or already building? Okay, so I'll give you a minute to respond to that as well. You see that? Um, you should be seeing that in, the, uh, in your poll screen. And you don't have to be on camera. I see someone in the chat mentioning that. Don't, it's up, totally up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. We're all in different places and, and different situations and different contexts. So for, for the purpose of this session, however you're comfortable is totally okay.
Okay, so um, about 10 of you have responded. I encourage all of you to respond if you can. Um, and I'm gonna share screen and see what we're looking at here. Um, so this is where, where folks are at um, in terms of what you're working on. Um, early stage building um, is, the, is the dominant response among those who answered, um, 42%. And 25% uh, are mulling over ideas. 25% have been running something for a while and 80% have been, are, are launching and, and developing. Um, and no one's just curious. So everyone's actually making something. Um, and then in terms of the um, type of project, so um, quarter view are developing a local site of one kind or another, and then evenly split newsletter, niche site, video product, something else. Um, only 8% doing a uh, podcast. So that's the, the, the small segment here. Um, great. Thanks for Thanks for uh, chiming in on, on that. Um, I want to um, first um, encourage you to, to pose some, some questions um, that are on your mind. So if you click over on the Slido to the Q&A tab, um, there's an op opportunity to ask questions. And you can also ask questions in the chat. Um, some people I know like to ask questions or prefer or feel more comfortable asking anonymously. And so, um, so if you prefer to ask anonymously, um, you can do that by using the Q&A tab on, on, uh, on Slido. So if you look at your screen where you, had, where you were answering the question, you'll see um, an opportunity to ask questions. So let's take a moment and just drop your questions. If you're here, I'm guessing there's at least one question on your mind. I know people usually reserve the end for Q&A, but I, I um, have been in sessions where I'm really curious about something or I have a burning question and I want that question answered. I don't want to wait till the end of the session for it. So if you have a question that's on your mind, you're already thinking about or you're wondering about, you might be wondering, for example, where am I? I'm actually in my daughter's room. <laughs> we have, we have uh, COVID situations everywhere, right? So we all make adaptations. Um, so that's, that's if you're seeing a, a colorful child, child's room background, that's, that's where I am right now in New York City. Um, and so, yeah, so questions that are on your mind, take a minute. You can, again, use the, use the chat if you prefer or drop them in the Q&A on Slido and I'll, I'll give you a, a little bit of a moment to, to drop those in. Okay, so I see some questions. So let's start with the ones that we have. Um, first, uh, there's one in the chat. I'd like to know if scholarships are available just for US citizens. And I'm pleased to say that Tatiana, the scholarships are available to anyone anywhere in the world. Um, uh, assuming you qualify for, for acceptance, um, the, the scholarships are not limited to US citizens. So, so you're certainly eligible no matter where you are in the world. Um, it's a competitive process. So there's a, a usually um, several, at least several candidates for each open spot in the program, at least thus far. So um, we can never unfortunately guarantee admission to everyone, but we, um, we, um, we do make uh, the scholarships um, available to, to, to select people um, no matter where they are in the world. Okay, other questions that are coming up here. Um, and uh, one is, are there, is there a limited number of uh, amount of participants? If so what's the selection criteria? Great, that's a great one. Um, and before I do that, actually, let me, let me just make sure everyone's clear on how we're gonna do this. I'll, I'll take some of these questions, I'll answer them as efficiently, as specifically, as transparently as possible. And then I'm gonna walk you through what is this 100 day journey like? Um, so what, what do you actually do in these 100 days? Um, and, and, uh, and I'll also turn to a couple of my colleagues, um, including Michael and, and Hillary along the way, just for their um, perspective. And, um, and then uh, open up periodically for any questions that, that you have along the way. So that's, that's where we're headed. Um, and hopefully by the end of this one hour or however long you choose to stay, um, feel free to, to stay as long as you'd like or, or to leave if you need to. Um, at the end of this period of time, hopefully you'll have a good sense of the, how the program works, what it's about, why it might be useful to you or, or whether it's useful or relevant to you and, um, and have a feel for, 
for um, kind of next steps if, if, um, if you're interested in, in, in uh, being a part of it. So, um, okay, I see another question. Um, could you elaborate on the mantra army of one? Yeah, so, so we've, we've used that term and described what we're doing is really empowering individual journalists, right? So there are, um, there are lots of journalism organizations that are, let's say, 10 people, 20 people. We've seen organizations um, like the 19th. We've seen the information. We've seen um, a whole range of new things start up the grid. We've seen a whole range of kind of big, bigger startups that, that have come about with Capital B is another one, one of big startups that have uh, quite a bit of venture funding, a big team of 10 or 20 people. Um, uh, uh, ben Smith and, and Justin Smith are, are, are working on a big, presumably a big international startup. So there, there are projects out there that are aiming at big teams with big venture funding. That's not us. What we're focused on is helping individual journalists, and some of you may be in that category, who want to create something of your own or are already creating something of your own, but need a little bit of a boost, need some new momentum, need some new ideas, want to strengthen your network, um, want some new momentum for that. In, in this new year. Um, so, so what we mean by army of one is a person who really wants to, to build something that's independent and that can have impact despite not necessarily being gigantic or despite not being venture funded. And it doesn't mean that people have to work exclusively alone because we all need collaborators and partners and colleagues. And sometimes there's a, a great benefit to having a teammate, a partner, a colleague, um, but we're not, generally building big organizations. That's not our forte. We're not focused on building 20 person organizations that have you know, millions in venture funding. That's just not, not what we're about. Um, we're about focused um, attention on niche, small niche ventures um, that are journalistic in nature, um, as opposed to you know, shoe stores or other kinds of ventures. Yeah, uh, um, thank you for that answer. Uh, sure. Richard yeah. Daly, has, I, I'm not sure if you, do you know um, Bushwick Daily, Katerina? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Katerina was in the program, was in our program actually in 2013. Yeah. Um, and, and since, I guess, four years ago, I took over uh, Bushwick Daily as the owner and publisher. And um, so it, it certainly, uh, Army of One for me seems like a very, you know, sometimes it, it's impossible to be an Army of One, no matter how small you are. Um, yeah. And, and it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a tough journey. Yeah, we, we, we hear that. And we, you know, we are practitioners ourselves. I have my own uh, project. Um, most of the people involved in the program who are teaching have their own projects as well. So we definitely, you know, feel that pain and the challenge of, of being solo. Um, it's, it's not an easy ride. We, we, do, we do not sugarcoat it, um, but we want to be helpful because we, we do find there's some best practices and some things that are working and some collaborators and networks that, that can be helpful. Um, and, and we also recognize that um, just the day-to-day -day is, is challenging. And, and one of the things that um, Hillary Fry happens to be multi-talented, um, not only a, a kind of experienced journalist and journalism leader, but also has an expertise in yoga. And so that's an example of something where like just along the journey, sometimes people need a, a break and a refresh and a recharge in various ways. And so we're all about, you know, trying to find ways to help people wherever, wherever they have needs. Um, and I'll say more about the structured components of the program in a little bit. Um, I just want to move through a few more questions and then I'll briefly introduce uh, Michael Rain and then, and, then, um, and then I'll walk you through the, the 100 days, give you a picture of that. Um, what's the X factor um, looking for, we're looking for in a, in a successful candidate? Um, and I, I think there are a couple things that we look for. One is evidence that you've done something in the past, um, because the past is often a good predictor of the future in the sense that if somebody has accomplished something, built something, created something, um, done some really successful or impactful work, there's a good chance they'll do that again. Um, it doesn't mean that somebody who hasn't done that in the past can't be successful, but it means that that's a, 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 good, a good indicator, a good signal that somebody has already done this and they might be able to do this again. And it doesn't mean that they've done it in the same way. It might be that they've done something else that shows impact or that shows dedication or perseverance or innovation or creativity. So we look at what people have done in the past. Uh, we also look at their passion. So past performance is one thing, but passion for what's ahead is another. So some people are really excited about serving a particular community. And that points me to the third thing, which is um, focus, a real clear focus. It doesn't mean you have all of the, yeah, the, the details buttoned down exactly because a lot of the process is learning and iterating and changing and developing and changing again. Um, but it does mean that you have a clear idea of a problem you wanna solve or a community you wanna focus on 
a group of people that you want to make a difference for, whether you're creating a newsletter, podcast, website, niche website, local site, video series, whatever you're creating, you have some um, kind of specific focus for that in mind. You're filling some kind of gap or you are serving a particular community in a, in a particular way. Um, and the reason I mention that is because some people are just curious to learn and that's great. That's, you know, certainly a great mindset to have, but until and unless you have a specific kind of focus, um, it's hard to dive in and get, get moving. And so, so we, we, we only have 100 days. And so we want people to come in with a specific and clear focus for what they want to do. Not necessarily exactly how it's going to work out in all of its details, um, but, but a clear focus on, on the community you want to serve and or the gap you want to fill, et cetera. So that's, those are some of the X factors that we're, we're looking for. Beyond that, we want to look at everyone's strengths. You know, we have a lot of different kinds of people from all different countries, all different age groups, all different races, social backgrounds, economic backgrounds, gender, race, ethnicity, religion. Like we have an amazing um, group that's been part of these past cohorts that we've had. And, um, and that's to me, one of the most exciting things is just getting people together from all of these different ways of thinking and backgrounds and experiences, life experiences. And, um, and so we're not looking for anyone in particular in any of those realms. That's, that's all about, you know, bringing together a great mix of, of great people. Um, okay, uh, let's see, other questions. Okay, so I'm gonna turn to the, to the Slido questions. What type of, the pro of project is this program not good for? So I would say if someone's trying to build something that's not journalistic, if you wanna build a charitable organization for um, providing reading glasses for people who don't have them in a particular part of the world, that's probably not in our bailiwick. It's not what we're gonna be most helpful for, or you wanna build some other kind of commercial venture that doesn't have anything to do with information or content. So that's number one. Um, number two, if you wanna build a giant scalable kind of uh, platform, um, uh, if you wanna build the next Facebook for you know um, X, Y, or Z, you know, for doctors or something, probably beyond the scope of what we can be most helpful with. Um, there are some other accelerators like Y Combinator that might be more relevant for those kinds of things. So, so those are kinds of things that are not, um, prob probably not what we're about. Um, beyond that, we, we're, we try to take a pretty open stance. So, you know, comics weren't considered journalism. Um, business information was once not considered journalism. TV news was considered not journalism way back when. Um, uh, certainly crossword puzzles. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of stuff that wasn't considered journalism. Sports was not considered, weather was not considered journalism. So a lot of these things that were once not considered journalism, people got their doors shut when they tried to do those things. And so we want to take as open a mindset as possible in terms of what people want to create, um, as long as they have a clear, again, a clear focus, a clear community they're serving, a gap they're filling, a strong rationale that they can make the case for. Limited number of participants, and um, what is the selection criteria? Um, yeah, so there are 20 participants in, in a cohort thus far. Um, we are um, um, considering expanding the size of the upcoming cohort, so that'll depend a little bit on the um, applicant pool. It's been such a strong applicant pool in the past three cohorts that we've we've um, been eager to open more doors as opposed to being a, 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 in a gatekeeping role. So we are hoping to increase the size of the cohort, and we'll, we'll determine that um, uh, definitively once we see the, the the rest of the applications that come in um but but it's 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 in the realm of of 20 um thus far so that's the general ballpark um and it, as i said it may increase slightly in terms of the selection criteria i think i've spoken to that a little bit um already uh but essentially we're, we're looking at people who have very specific and clear ideas and a strong track record um and we're looking for a diverse pool along all of those different criteria and, and characteristics that I mentioned earlier. And, um, and we're looking for passion and, and people who are really focused and motivated and determined to um, develop something and build something and, 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 and willing to, to persist even despite obstacles and challenges. Um, yeah, so people want to know, somebody asked about the experience of Hillary and Michael, so I'll turn to them in a little bit and they'll share more about how into, the question is how into their project were when they started. Maybe I'll share this screen so you can see what I'm looking at as I'm talking through these questions. Um, uh, how into their project were they when they were started? So um, Michael and Hillary, maybe you can talk a little bit about kind of your, your own work um, when we get to that. Um, and then, um, let's see, I can't quite see this question. 
if you expand the cohort size, how will your current staff adapt to either teaching and coaching? Yeah, great question too. Um, we're all about logistics. We're all about execution and, and making the program as effective as possible. So I love I love the question because it really reflects an interest in, in sort of the quality of the experience, which is in, in my view, super important. Um, and the answer is we have built our staff, we've grown our staff significantly over the past couple of years. Um, partly thanks to our fearless leader, Anita Salina, who sort of heads up the J plus programs and sort of manages things. Um, and, um, and Anita has really helped us expand the size of our team. And, uh, and that's been really helpful in terms of being able to execute new programs. We have a new creator workshop series. Some of you attended um, that Hillary and, and Yvonne, um, Leo, our other creator residents have been hosting. We have a summit events twice a year. We have um, occasional other smaller events throughout the year, um, we have a variety of different programming and, and that's been um, enabled by having some, some additional team members. Um, and we have also um, a, a whole teaching staff and a whole mentor staff um, that, that, that helps and, and that we will continue to grow as, as if and when we, we do expand the cohort size slightly. Um, let's see. Differences between G and I and the J plus creators program. So I, I, I don't wanna to speak to G and I because I'm not a part of that program and, and, and I don't want to, you know, kind of, um, speak to it without being a part of it. Um, but I can tell you that um, I can tell you about our program. And, and as we go, I'll, I'll give you more details about it. And, and you'll, you'll, I think, have a sense of some of the just differences between those, those two things. Um, what types of projects are most in demand at the moment, the creative economy? That's a hard one to describe or answer in brief. Um, I think niche communities are, are flourishing in a lot of different sectors. So within the health arena, people with specific health conditions are moving to newsletters and podcasts that address their specific health condition. In sports, there's an increasing focus on specific teams if you're following a sports podcast or a very specific soccer league in Europe. Um, and, and, and if you are in the, the realm of science and technology, like similarly, if you're interested in Bitcoin, there's, there's just narrower and narrower, more and more focused communities um, that center around a podcast or a newsletter or a video series or video channel. Um, and, and so I think that nichification and narrowing of those niches, um, so people aren't just focused on crypto broadly, they're focused on Ethereum, or they're not just focused on NFTs, they're focused on a very specific kind of NFT and so forth and so on. Um, and then the scholarship acceptance rate for Substack um, really depends on the, the, the number of applicants and the number of people working on on newsletters, so it's hard, and and we don't have the full pool in yet, so it's hard to, it's hard to to uh, um, to speak to that. We we typically only have a couple of scholarship positions for the Substack um, newsletter um, scholarship specifically, um, since that's the one you asked about. So, so that's um, that's you know only really a couple people that that are eligible for that. Um, okay, I want to move on from this Q and I want to turn to Michael and Hillary. Um, and um, and then we'll, we'll walk through the, the 100 days and give you a preview of that. Um, Michael, maybe you could just say a word about yourself. Uh, Michael's a TED speaker whose TED talk, I think had more than a million views the last time I saw it. It's a great talk. Um, but beyond that, he's done a bunch of different projects um, and has done exciting work on a lot of different things um, and has recently completed a couple of different fellowships. Um, so uh, Michael, um, maybe you could just say a quick, quick hello. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Michael Rain. Excited to see so many of you uh, working on media and journalism projects. This is uh, wonderful. So I'm the uh, currently the founder of an organization called Anodi, which is a media and research company focused on people with immigrant backgrounds. And our in our media currently, we have a podcast and a Substack, and research focused on mis mis and disinfo, uh, particularly in private digital messaging networks. And as Jeremy mentioned. Um, I completed a few fellowships recently. I uh, was a Stanford uh, Night Journalism Fellow, uh, an Aspen Institute Tech Policy Fellow, uh, all of which to support my work in media and journalism. But before all of those things, uh, <laughs> I was a uh, EJ uh, 2017 Fellow at, at CUNY, which set the stage for all of those things, uh, really. Um, I wouldn't have been able to pivot and grow without this program. Uh, someone asked what stage I was um, when I started. So I, I had a startup at the time that was about two years old and we had a live mobile app. We had an email newsletter and, um, and, and we were accepted into uh, a few accelerator programs, uh, one run by Google, another by Facebook, another by Microsoft, but exceedingly got the most value out of this program um, in fact, there was a month 
there was a project that we had uh, for, that we ran a um, campaign for a month, and we got our biggest imp impression reach that month of over 1.6 million people, which was huge for us because we at that time I think we only had 40,000 downloads on our app, so um, hugely impactful. But uh, to clarify, my my uh, cohort was mixed. Some of us did have projects. Some people uh, just had ideas. Um, and I would I want to say every single one of them um, are either entrepreneurs in in an organization or running some kind of initiative similar to the one that they had an idea for. So if you fall in that broad range, um, this program is for you. And if you have any other direct questions about my experience, I'd be happy to answer it here on the chat or you can find me on Twitter or something. And Hillary, I don't want to take up all the, the air. <laughs> Thanks, You're Michael. welcome to all, to all the air, Michael. <laughs> um, it's so nice to meet you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Hillary Fry. I'm a creator in residence. My colleague, uh, Yvonne Liao, is also a creator in residence. Um, she's not here, so I'm representing for both of us. And in our roles as, oh, this is a new role with the program, um, but we're here to support everyone who's part of the cohort and um, also past members of the cohort where, um, so you sort of get to join a community. If you participate in this program, it's not like you just show up and then buy forever. We're really working hard to um, create a community for creators to be able to leverage each other's expertise and knowledge um, and bring some emotional support and all the things that we need to be successful. Um, a little bit about me, I was, um, as Jeremy mentioned, um, th this program is new for me. I was the executive editor of the Huffington Post uh, for the last four years. I left in about a year ago, uh, last March, and I've run newsrooms at NBC and um, I ran a team at Politico for a while. I have a long 20 year history, both uh, reporting and, and writing and running um, and editing and then eventually running entire newsrooms. Yahoo News was another, been around. Um, but I wanted the opportunity to help take some of my expertise from all this time in corporate media to help individuals succeed um, in this space because I think this is a big part of our media future. We know that uh, you know mainstream media and big corporate media doesn't serve all the communities and reach all the people and provide all the information and things that we, we want to have out there and available. So this was a very exciting opportunity for me to get closer to people that are doing really interesting um, projects and have different interesting ideas in journalism and in media and try to support the inception, development, and growth of those projects uh, with my background. And I would say also I'll just speak for Yvonne too. She's she's an amazing resource and an amazing person in this program. I've already learned so much from. She's an entrepreneur herself. Uh, she runs a um, company called Bewilder. She's very into outdoor sort of wilderness experiences and education. And she brings all of her knowledge as a creator to this program too. So we really complement each other. I think I have a lot of experience in editorial strategy um, and. Also, as Jeremy mentioned, I am a yoga teacher and I'm very interested in sort of holistic survival in the world. So I also just like to be here to help people break through um, different problems. Sometimes we just need a community to talk to in a small group and especially we're, we're very online, we're global and bringing people together to help create you know, an experience where no one feels alone. I think we've heard a lot of feedback on this from the current cohort that's been really valuable to them just have an opportunity to um, bring problems with their projects, but also we're here to sort of support in a, in a broader way as well. Um, so that's me and that's what I am doing here. And it's a really, I guess I'll also just say, I think there was a question about my, uh, my project. I don't, my project is being here as a mentor and also with Yvonne to create this series of programming that Jer Jeremy alluded to, um, these creator conversation workshops. We're really trying to also expand the world of knowledge for creators and those workshops are public. So anybody can come and really get into the experience of being a creator, 
um, this first group, this first bunch we're doing is looking at, at like really launching a brand and how to create space for yourself and ownership of your brand um, through the eyes of talking to some pretty successful folks out there. We'll also be looking at things. We have a lot of questions about operations and how do you know when to grow and add to your team? How do you manage insurance? How do you own your IP? All those things. So we're really trying to also take input from the creator community to get those questions answered from people who know from experience. Um, and the last thing I'll just add, I think for, I can't speak exactly for Yvonne, but I expect that she's also doing this just from our own contacts in the world. I know I, I have mentors in the current cohort. I will always have mentors when I'm part of this program and I'm here for anyone, but one of the things I love being able to do is just make connections for folks in this program to other people out there. Um, I've been around a long time. I know a lot of journalists and just sometimes talking to a creator and thinking, oh, you know, it would be really helpful if you, if I could connect you with this person, we're here for that too. So it's really the program is a focus program, which Jeremy will talk about the hundred days, but we're always trying to expand the world for people um, to help them grow as individuals, as creators and entrepreneurs and make them successful. Thanks, Hillary, and thanks, Michael. Um, if people have questions for, for either of you, um, they can put them in the chat and you can answer them there, or, or I'll, I'll also maybe, um, I may call on you uh, as we go along to just share your own perspective on different aspects. Um, and I wanna just highlight one thing that um, Hillary said in particular about the mentor mentee thing. So. Um, Hillary is one of our mentors and every single person who's in our programs um, in, in this program, the journalism creators program has, has a mentor. So is paired with someone individually. And that's one thing I think it's a little different than programs that you might just do online as a self-guided thing, or as, as a, you know, watching YouTube videos or something like there, you actually have someone that you can check in with regularly who is, um, you know, up to date on what you're doing and has input for you. They don't necessarily have all the answers uh, because they're challenging things that you're working on, but they can be a sounding board and a useful resource and introduce you to other people like like what Hillary was talking about. Um, and these are all people who are creating um, either, you know, uh, creating things on their own, have done so successfully, they're leaders, they're, they're innovators, um, and they're people who are, you know, dedicated to being helpful. Um, I want to answer a couple questions that came up along the way. Um, and uh, one is about someone who applied to you. I, I remember your application. You applied for a previous cohort. Um, you're concentrating on a different project. Um, that's fine. That's, you know, we're, we're uh, open to people. Everyone has a different journey and has different phases and stages in their journeys. So that's not something that we're, that's problematic at all. That's, you know, just make a strong case for what you're up to now and give us give us a, a clear sense of, of of what you're up to and, and why you're doing it and who you're serving. Um, and uh, and we'll we'll um, we won't hold any of that against you in any way. Um, there's a question about uh, should you apply for from an organization? Um, so the, the key factor there is can you create something independently? So if you're part of an organization and they're going to determine what you can or cannot do, that might make it difficult to be fully independent in terms of your creative process um, because you're part of a big team and you have to check in everything with a team. That's a different kind of a process than an independent creative process where you can kind of try different things and launch different things. So that's really the constraint that we're, um, we're thinking about there. If you are free to create a brand new product and you have full ownership of that and you can launch something and try something and build something, um, then, then that certainly would be fine. Um, if you are part of a large team, and you're constrained in terms of what you can do, that might make it a little more challenging. Um, but each case will evaluate independently and, and um, I'd encourage you to apply and give us your picture of what, you, what you're up to, what you're, what you're excited to build and, and, and maybe, maybe it'll be a good fit. Um, somebody asked about, would this be helpful for launching an online magazine, um, Libby? And would, could I elaborate on what, what I mean about uh, track record? So yeah, I mean, online magazine is, is kind of a broad term. It could mean a lot of things. We tend to focus on, on specific kind of niche focus areas. Um, Hannah Raskin is here um, with us. I see Hannah. Thank you for joining Hannah. Hannah's in the current cohort and she's an experienced creator herself who has a, a successful and growing Substack that reaches a very specific community focused on a very specific uh, kind of food related topic. And, and maybe Hannah, you can give us like a couple sentences on that. Um, but that's an example of something that um, that's a perfect fit with our program. And it's, it's a niche, very specific community. Um, it's not aiming to be, uh, you know, I don't think, and Hannah, correct me if, I, if, if you see this differently, I don't think it's aiming to be a million person, gigantic news org competing with the Washington Post. Um, it's, it's a niche product for a niche community. So Libby, if that's the kind of thing that you're envisioning, um, then, then certainly um, 
that that could relate. And in terms of the track record, basically past success, past accomplishment, past impact, um, that means a lot of different things to different people. And, and it's not one size fits all um, where we're looking pretty openly at what people have done in the past. Um, but but some kind of uh, some kind of successful work in, in journalism or in creating something is certainly a helpful starting point. Um, Hannah, do you want to just uh, give us a, a couple of sentences since I since I, I I'm, yeah. I'm putting you on the spot here, but um, just sure. a couple of sentences, and then and then I'm going to dive into the 100 days, and we'll give you a preview of what that's like. Cool. Um, hi, um, I started. It's called the Food Section uh, as a newsletter that I started with the help of the Substack local grant. So I came into this program with some constraints because I had received that grant. So unlike some folks in the program, I knew it had to be a Substack for the first year. Um, but I, I cover food and drink across the American South. That's what the purpose of the the newsletter is. Um, yeah, and I've really enjoyed the program, so I endorse it. And what's one thing that might be useful for people to know about this 100 day journey um, as you're as you're kind of nearing the end of, of it? I mean, I bet you've already mentioned this, but the thing that's been most striking to me that I didn't know coming into it is it goes beyond 100 days. I mean, that's sort of the deal is that, you know, you do feel like there is a whole community, um, both that we forged within our cohort, I think, and that's going to extend beyond that. So. You know, I, I actually, I just told a friend to apply for this program because I think the networking is fantastic, especially for those of us who live outside of major media centers. I live in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, it's, it's been really beneficial. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's an important point as well that we, we are actually building this year in 2022 um, onto this network um, that we that we have. Of, of alums, people have been through the programs, people have advised and, and mentored and taught in the program. Um, and, and we hope that that, that can help us um, provide more, more momentum as people move, move beyond the program. Um, there's, there's a certain amount we can do in 100 days and we, 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 we aim to do as much as possible to, to help people give a, get a boost in those 100 days. But, but certainly 100 days is not the end of the journey as, as Hannah points out, so thanks for that. Um, thanks for that, Hannah. Um, Okay, so let, let me jump in and give you a picture now of the, the 100 days. And um, I'm going to share screen and then I'm gonna ask someone to give me a, um, a verbal um, note that you can actually see, um, see the screen in full. Um, can you see my screen? Can you see the slide? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I'm on a, I'm, I'm without my extra monitor today on a se separate setup, so that's helpful. Thanks. Um, we'll, we'll skip past this. We did some some of those questions. Um, maybe, maybe we'll have time for for another one later. Um, so, a quick overview: of the hundred days, more questions, and then I'll tell you about the application if that's on anyone's mind. Um, just nuts and bolts. So, I'm assuming now you're you're past the application phase. Okay, so this is for kind of if you're going to be participating in this journey. Um, that's kind of the, the assumption here. So, so I want to give you a kind of inside peek at to what, what, is, what are these 100 days like? And the photos you're seeing, by the way, are, are people in the current, uh, current cohort, um, and including, including Hannah here. Um, and so phase one, uh, onboarding. So before you start, before the 100 days, um, we welcome accepted applicants to the program. We um, try to give you a picture of what's ahead in more detail. We try to give you some reading and some advanced prep um, to do, not too much because people are busy. In advance, but we try to give you a little bit of a, a head start as to what's coming ahead, um, and then we try to help you meet one another um, in advance of, of getting getting started. So one of the challenges of a remote program is that you don't necessarily get to spend face to face time with people. Um, one of the advantages is that you can be all over the world. You can be anywhere in the world, and you can continue to you know work on whatever you're working on and, and take care of your family or do whatever else other obligations you may have that we all have. Um, and so, but but to address the, the the challenge of being disparate and spread out all over the world, um, uh, we we try to connect people to one another as part of the onboarding process. We get to know each other. We we do um, some some fun stuff as part of that onboarding and orientation. Um, after that, um, the journey begins, and this is a little bit of what 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 that's uh, what that consists of. So the, the first of all, the focus is to to essentially. Um, help with three things: um, the product, the community or audience, and the business model. So the product is thinking about what are you actually creating, who is it for, how does it work, how does it look, how does it feel, how do you produce it, how, how what what kind of platform or approach do you take, what's the 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 um, essence of the value proposition, like what are you actually adding to the world? Um, all of those things are part of the product. The community and and the audience 
is about how do you reach people? So how do you market this? How do you build a member kind of community or a community of people who are reading or listening or engaging with what you're doing? And then finally, how do you actually make this sustainable? So how does this become something that lets you eat and pay your rent and do whatever you need to do to survive? Um, so how do, you, how do you monetize? How do you develop revenue? How do you make money? Um, and, and we talk about lots of different kinds of approaches. And when you try to bring examples of different people who are making money in different ways um, and, and, and address some of the challenges along the way and address some of the tools along the way um, that are helpful. Um, so in terms of the mechanics and the logistics, um, we meet twice a week for live sessions. Um, there's a little adjustment um, in terms of the timing this time to next time um, based on what's most, um, what's, what works best for people around the world. Uh, so in the, in the upcoming term, the sessions will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, 10.30 a.m. Eastern for two hours. Um, those are two hour sessions twice a week. And then there's also supplemental materials. Asynchronous is the term people sometimes use. Material that you can use on your own schedule these are videos, readings, um, handouts, worksheets, other kinds of materials to dive deeper into these topics. And then there's time that you spend building your own work, to, writing content, um, recording, um, testing things out, sending uh, surveys to your community members. So those are the kinds of things that you do on your own, on your own time flexibly. Um, and then there are mentor meetings and there are some other things that happen, um, bonus events. Um, we had a bonus event, for example, a, a guest talk from Hamish McKenzie, the co-founder of Substack came in this term. Um, Hillary led, uh, has led a couple of yoga sessions. We've had a couple of different kinds of bonus sessions that are optional and that people often enjoy participating in. So these are a couple of the courses um, that we have as part of the program, Opportunity Exploration. Um, this is about understanding the audience you're serving, thinking about the stakeholders that are involved in this market, the ecosystem, the landscape, what other publications are out there, um, what, is the, uh, what does the market look like? What are the needs that people have in this community? Um, Ariel Zerulnik, who um, worked on the Membership Puzzle Project, is a fantastic engagement journalist and, and um, leads a course about building community and membership and how do you actually provide value to people on an ongoing basis. And um, Dan Oshinsky is the founder of Inbox Collective and former newsletter editor at The New Yorker and at BuzzFeed and, um, and talks about newsletter strategy, newsletter tactics. Um, we also have Amanda McLaughlin um, leading uh, sessions on, on podcasts specifically and, and community building. Um, this is a course on product development, which focuses on how do you actually develop the product? What are the aspects to be mindful of as you're building a product. Um, we have a section on growth and how do you actually find partners and build um, your, your community. We have a bunch of different subtopics that we cover in various different ways with a whole range of different kinds of speakers and instructors. Um, and I, I, think, I think we'll skip this activity for a moment um, just to get to more questions. Um, these are people with, with uh, expertise, experience, and enthusiasm. These are the three qualities we look for in people. Um, someone who can really talk with experience about the day-to-day -day details of building something, creating something, running something, making money on something. People with experience teaching who can explain things really well and have, uh, have experience in different kinds of contexts and situations and who are really excited and love talking about and, and teaching about the, the topics so that the sessions are really engaging and exciting. They're not boring, they're not dull, they're hands-on, they're interactive um, to the extent we, we can make them um, that way. So again, logistics, the, the, the sessions are Tuesdays and Thursdays and, and they're um, live and they're interactive and they're important. They're at the core of what we do. Um, they're not optional. Um, and it's, uh, it's essentially, you know, 100 days between March 24th and, and June 30th is, is when we're, we're in session um, for the next cohort. These are all the different kinds of things that we're teaching about. Um, there's a presentation, uh, internal presentation uh, days that happen at the end. There's also a, a feedback roundtable. We bring experts and they give you input um, in addition to the mentorship. So there's a lot of different um, components to the program that happen uh, within these 100 days. Um, there's a, a, an online um, uh, collection of materials that we call a path, um, and we, we really like this way of presenting materials and sharing materials and having discussions in between sessions. And our, our objective overall is to make these days uh, really days to remember and experience to remember, an experience that has impact in helping you grow your, your project so that you come away in a stronger position with a stronger sense of the product, a strong sense of community, 
um, who you're reaching and, and even a bigger community if you've been working on it along the way. And uh, new ideas and maybe progress on, in terms of monetization, um, making money or at least having a clear or, or an improved map of how you will make money going forward. And um, again, the journey doesn't end really in 100 days. Our specific program ends in 100 days, but then we want to give people a, a boost for the, for, the, for the months that follow and, and, and um, invite them to be part of the community uh, that we have um, after the program ends. So um, with that, I will, again, open up for, for questions. Hopefully that gives you a picture of, of, um, of the program and, and what the 100 days are like. And I'll invite um, Michael in particular, as someone who's been through the program, if you, if you want to add anything in terms of your own experience um, of the program or something that, when you reflect back on it, was, was useful about it or, or was helpful in terms of your own experience. Yeah, I, I actually wanted to follow up uh, what Hillary shared in emphasizing uh, the resource of people and how important that was and the different types that I was exposed to, whether they be journalism professionals or other media professionals, as mentors, as speakers, all of it uh, hugely impactful still is, still, still impacts the work I do now. Um, so I think that's really, really important. Um, also, uh, I want to say for the program, this is an excellent course for you if you are interested in launching and building anything, like in a in a broad kind of way. Um, you're going to learn a skill set that you're going to use over and over. So whether that works for the idea you have now or the thing that you're trying to build isn't as important as you having these uh, skills and this awareness and um, all of these things to be able to build and grow something that's going to be applicable, whether you're working independently, whether you want to do it within an organization, whether you're collaborating with people. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you know that you have that in you and you have ideas that you want to launch, uh, you should absolutely apply. Thanks, Michael. And I want to recognize and address a couple of questions that have come up. Uh, along the way, um, and and uh, one of them is about successful applicants or, or people who have launched successful things. Um, this is one I love because I love to um, uh, to brag about the the past participants who are who are doing amazing things. Um, um, and I, I'm like, I always struggle to 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 um, have enough time to talk about all these projects because so many people have created so many things out of the out of, out of these um, cohorts and. Uh, it starts in the early years with projects like Narratively um, and Skill Crush, um, both of which have gone on to do extremely well and grow and, and build organizations that have a lot of people and have a lot of impact. Um, Coda Story, um, NK News out of North Korea. Coda Story covers um, stories across Asia and Russia in particular. Um, Matt Keiser launched What the F Just Happened Today, very successful, hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers. and and. Um, that's just the beginning. There's so so, so many others. Um, Purple was acquired, actually, um, a couple of years ago. It was another project focusing on SMS um, news delivery, um, and um, and so many uh, so many 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 others. Um, it, uh, Donna, I don't have a percentage because we, we we wouldn't really have a good fair way to to put a number on it because how you define profitable is different for different people and and. Um, and uh, but I can say there are, there are many many uh, examples of those. And if you ever want to get in touch with people, if that's of interest to you, um, feel free to ping me and can get in touch or, or share with you some other examples. Um, somebody asked about the decision making and when the code will be decided. It'll be a few weeks after the uh, deadline, which is February fourth. So we go th go through a very, very thorough process in terms of having a committee reading every single person's application very carefully. Um, and Michael has been a part of that and, and knows that process. Um, and it's it's really important for us to give each person full consideration from multiple perspectives, and uh, and so we take our, our, our we do that as efficiently as possible, but it takes a couple of weeks um, because of the number of applications, and then we we communicate to people as soon as possible, um, typically within a few weeks uh, of the application deadline, and then we onboard people um, in in March um, because we'll start March twenty fourth, so that's kind of the time frame. Um, and how do the cohorts help each other? If I was asking after, after 100 days. So this is a really important question for me. 
and something I'm thinking a lot about. Um, I think it's it's informal and and rather loose in terms of how people help each other. We don't want to impose upon people um, too much, but people tend to reach out and help each other um, when they have overlapping topics or interests. We have uh, we have now established a Slack community that serves the alumni kind of core of the program. People have been through the program, and that's uh, uh, we we expect that to be and are building. For that to be a, a place, a hub for that community to really help each other. Um, what many groups have done in the past is have a, a dedicated group, like a WhatsApp group for their own cohort um, or a Slack group in some cases. Um, but increasingly, we're trying to build that network as a whole so that people across the cohorts can, can collaborate and help each other. Um, sometimes it means uh, collaborating on actual projects. So there are a number of cases where people have worked together after the program on, on projects. Um, in other cases, it's social support and people kind of celebrate their victories and their wins. You know, when somebody launches something, their cohort mates um, kind of celebrate with them. In some cases, people have been invited to speak at a conference that someone else was hosting and lots of things like that, um, both related to projects and, and not. Um, uh, the application deadline is February 4th, which is coming up next week, the end of next week. Um, and then the program begins March 24th. And um, so uh, someone's asking about newsletter projects and how frequently people publish. Um, some people publish uh, multiple times a week, like Judd Legum. Um, we heard from, uh, was it yesterday, the day before, uh, um, uh, spoken as part of our creator series um, and publishes four times a week. Many others publish one time a week. That's very typical for newsletter publishers. It's, it's, uh, I found that to be a challenge enough to publish once a week myself, uh, let alone you know, more than once a week is, is really hard. Uh, so once a week is plenty, but some people publish every other week or every month or periodically. There's a lot of different formats and, and um, cadences that people use. Um, and it depends a lot on your audience and on your own bandwidth. You know, there's different constraints that people are, are facing and different needs their, their communities have. Um, other questions about the program? We're, we're in our last few minutes here. Um, so any other questions that are on your mind? Anything you want to know about the program? Anything we haven't talked about? Um, no questions are off limits, so feel free to ask anything about any aspect of the program. Good Jeremy, morning, Jeremy. I had to ask uh, a question. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alex. When you were answering the, the question uh, about successes in, in the, the cohorts, you, you, you read off the list of, of publications on, on the, the Medium article that you posted about why army of, about why army of one, but the only one you didn't mention was, was Bushwick Daily, which um, obviously stood out to me, uh, and I was wondering why. Not not intentional. There's there's many others I omitted as well that, that have also been successful. It wasn't there was no no slight intended. Um, Katerina was great. Bushwick Daily is a great project. It's it's you know a good example of local done well and creatively and serving the community in a in a niche you know successful way. So definitely, and we've had actually former students at the J School of mine have also worked on. Bushwick Daily, you know, outside of the entrepreneurial context um, as contributors. So, so yeah, big fan of that publication, nothing, no slight intended. Yeah. Does that, does that answer, or did you have a, a question about that, Alec? Or? Uh, that, that was the question. Okay, yeah. No, I think it's great. I think it's a great project. Um, somebody else was starting to ask a question as well. Hi, good morning. It's Farah. Thanks, Jeremy, Hillary, sure. Michael. This has been really helpful. I have, um, it, it's an aligned question, and Hillary may be, um, may be able to answer this best. Because of your experience in legacy media, which is where I have spent so much of my career as well, are you getting feedback from legacy corporate media about this sort of whole creator economy and, and these new uh, people like us really coming in. You've now done three cohorts, I think. Um, uh, is there a sense in the corporate media community of these new creators coming into the market and what they are bringing into the market? Is there recognition? Is there um, acknowledgement? Is, the, are, is there a sense of what they are seeing um, of value? In, in that corporate community? Do you want to speak to that? Hillary, I think, I don't know if you want to speak to that specifically briefly. I mean, it's not something I've gone out to explore explicitly in the last few months. I do think, 
I mean, you're seeing these things like what's happening at the Atlantic. And I mean, Charlie Warzel is a sort of different case because he was at the Times as a columnist and had the successful Substack, but now has, you know, got, been a, like his newsletter is the product that is now under the Atlantic umbrella because there is obviously this acknowledgement that the communities that are being built around these projects can be very valuable to these legacy media brands. That's not to say that I think creators are establishing their brands and their projects with the idea of like then going and living underneath legacy media. But for some people that certainly um, might be an option. I do. I certainly think that as far as talent awareness is concerned, that legacy media is paying very close attention to what's happening in this space with the different things people are making on their own. And, you know, I talked to Michael Hobbs back in December, who has two, well, he was a co-founder of this incredibly successful podcast called, and you're wrong about, it's like top three Patreon podcasts, so, you know, supporters. And he's just a brilliant guy. Now he has a podcast called Maintenance Phase about the weight loss industry. He's a co-host and um, creator of, and like, you know, he's just another example in a different space where multiple legacy Spotify, you know, Pineapple Street, all these legacy sort of podcast companies have wanted to acquire him because they recognize the value. Um, but he wants to be independent. So he's a creator and he wants to do it his way and he doesn't want a big fancy production regime around him. So I think there's a lot of attention on it, but I th still think the power is in the creator and building what they want to build and then deciding what's right for them in the long run with, with their project and their product. Thanks, Ori. Um, we're, we're last couple of minutes here. I want to invite people to, um, to, um, to share um, uh, something that's inspiring you. Uh, um, and this can be a, in the chat. Um, I'm always curious what, what's inspiring people. And, um, and this can be, again, I'll paste the link into the slide. It could be a newsletter, a podcast, a niche site, something else that you're reading recently that's been inspiring and interesting to you. I also want to address in these last moments uh, a couple of questions I saw that hadn't yet been addressed in the Slido, um, uh, in the Q&A. And I also want to re remind everyone that I'm happy to answer as uh, people have already shared their contact in the chat. Um, I'll share mine as well, jeremy.kaplan at journalism.cuny.edu if you have further questions. Um, about the program, any aspect of what we've talked about or haven't talked about today, um, feel free to, to ping me. Um, and, and there were a couple questions about, um, somebody asked, uh, what's the, how did they phrase it? What's the point of the program? What are we supposed to be doing at, after 100 days? Um, somebody asked and they said, um, are we recommending a cryptocurrency blog or, or newsletter? Um, so I appreciate the candor in the question. Um, uh, so the point of the program is to help you advance your venture in three ways, move the product forward, reach in a community in a, in a more significant, substantial, um, way, impactful way and develop or, or refine, improve your business model. Those are the three points of the program. So product community and business model. And some people start with nothing and we want to help you get to having something in those three realms, a sense of prototype, the product, improved product, um, vision of an improved sense of how you're going to build a community or how you're going to maintain connection community and how, how you're going to actually make this sustainable. So wherever you're at, we want to move you forward. If you're already advanced, we want to give you new ideas, new approaches, new network. If you were just at the beginning, we want to move you forward so you're on the way. So that's the point of the program. Those three things help you with those three things, help creators with those three things. Um, in terms of where we want to be after 100 days, forward on those three areas. So again, if you started at one place, we want to move you ahead. Some people are more advanced when they come in. The project is already running. We want to move them a little forward. Um, and then in terms of the cryptocurrency, um, that, that's an example of a topic that's of interest to some people at this point. If somebody has a specific aspect that they want to address in a particular topic they're passionate about and they see a, a need in the world, um, yes, we want to empower people to do that. If they want to do something that's much less sexy and it's not cryptocurrency, but they want to address um, a problem of illiteracy among a particular group in a particular place, um, or they want to address you know, injustices in, in a particular situation or community or context, that's also great. Um, so, so we don't take a, a strong position requiring or restricting people in terms of what they're recovering. That's, that's, um, that's something that, um, that we want to leave open to people. Um, we want to empower people, enable them. Um, that's our, that's our role is to be enablers and, and to hopefully help people in, in the ways that, that might be useful to them. Um, and 
And then if someone's developing something innovative in a in new interactive form, um, is it helpful to apply when it's under development or when it's finished? Um, that's hard to say. I think that's a case by case situation. Um, we're not necessarily going to be the place to help in terms of the hardcore tech. Um, that's not our focus. Um, so if there's a lot of tech specific needs that someone has that they might benefit from from um, from other kinds of, of uh, resources or programs. Um, and with that, I want to I want to um, to close so that everyone can get back to what they have going on in their lives. Um, thank you for coming. Thanks for attending. Thanks for taking the time to, to hear about what we're up to and to ask your questions and to engage in this session. Um, and as I said, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is open and happy to, to entertain questions that you have. Um, it's a particularly busy time. Um, we'll do our best to, I'll do my best to get back to as quickly as possible. Um, but we all have so many different programs run. So, so, um, so if I can't meet with you personally um, today or tomorrow, um, just understand that, that that's the rationale, but, um, but ping me with your questions and let us know what you're wondering about and apply. Um, that's the best way to, to, to be involved if, if you're interested is, is just to fill out the application. It's fairly short. Um, we think it's, it's manageable. So um, I'll put the link in here one more time. Um, or Charlotte, if you have that handy, you can paste that in here. Will there be another, when will be there another? Yeah, so there's um, quite a final question about um, when the next cohort is. Um, there we go. There's a link. Um, the, the cohorts, uh, as of now, are twice a year. So we have one in the spring and one in the fall. And we have no plans to change that. Uh, it's hard to predict what will happen in the future. Um, but that's our plan is to have another cohort. Cohort number five would be in the fall if, if the spring isn't a good isn't good, a good fit for you. Um, and the applications would be over the summer. Thanks again um, for coming and participating. And thanks, Michael and Hillary, in particular, for taking your time, sharing your time with us, and sharing, sharing your experience. And um, and thanks everyone for for joining. Have a good rest of your day, and and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing some of you in, in the program and in, in the months ahead. Thanks everyone. <laughs>